So here's an extra, two extra tips on why the image stuff works and how you can use it. When you have text in your image, you can bring in different points of view. So imagine if I just gave you a Sunday and it's just vanilla, right? Like, okay, it's fine. But like, if I don't hit that, it doesn't work for me. When you have text in an image and the raw text in your LinkedIn post, your image could be a quote. It could be a conversation. It could be a question. And then your first line, your hook of the LinkedIn post, the actual text you write or the rehook, that second line can be something totally different. It could be a reply. It could be commentary. It could be a statement. So you give yourself this additional layer, this nuance, this like, you know, praline ripple that goes through the ice cream that adds another layer of, of depth. And you can tell I haven't eaten. I'm starving. I have my protein shape next to me. So that's why I got, <laughs> I'm, I'm running back to this right now. But like the same way we talked about crunchy words, your hook, the first line of your text and your rehook, the second line of your text needs to be like a really good movie trailer or a really good first date. And here's what I mean by that. One. If you only talk about yourself, you will not get a second date. It needs to be for the audience above all else. Second thing, like a good movie trailer, it needs to be short. It needs to build momentum and hype. There should be some curiosity about what's in the movie. Because if you told me everything, why do I need to click see more? Why do I need to see the movie? Right? And it should have really high contrast between that first line and that second line using power words that evoke an emotion feel crunchy that you can feel. So what I mean by that, um, you know, one of the a posts that I wrote um, a few weeks ago says, marketing is one of the hardest professions that looks easy. This is dangerous. Why? Think about that for a second, right? Yeah. There's super high contrast between that first of like easy and hard. So it's immediate to that. And one of the great things you can do in copywriting is play on this technique. So if I said, hey, I'm too poor to go on vacation, that's a shitty headline. But if I said, I want to go to Bora Bora, but I'm Pura Pura, that's funny because I've used like a rhetorical device to get your attention and hook you, right? The same way it's like you want to create contrast using good, bad, right? Negative, positive, yes, no, hard, easy, like whatever the forms of contrast, but think of contrast as the king of what's going to get attention. Then you want to have an open loop or an open question. If I came on your podcast and just gave you the first two of my three framework and said, go check out my newsletter for the third, you're probably bought in on the first two if you were interested. You're going to go to that thing. So ask a question, ask something, have some type of curiosity look because open things that are unfinished get more headspace, right? It's the same reason why if you don't write something down, you think about it, you're like, how the fuck was that? So you always want to have a good question or a good open loop or something that makes them think. And you know, my post about like, Policing personal brands probably wasn't my best hook. There probably should have been like, why? Or like, how come? Or here's what you should look for. We're like, not my best hook and real because it, it missed that. And then power words. Dangerous. Why is it dangerous? What are you talking about? Have you, right? It's like, find some way, but don't clickbait it. It can't be clickbait. If you're like, you know, um, I was on the way to work and I saw this homeless person. And then here's the story of how, and then please buy my SaaS product. Do not do that. So many people think it's like, it's actually a technique that the, even the U.S. government uses on Instagram and what they've called is the Venus flytrap technique. As opposed to them trying to educate the American public about really complex, meaty topics, they use memes and like very simple attention grabbing things to get people to stop and pay attention. It's kind of like that, um, you know, like timeshare pitch that you're forced to go to to get like a, a better deal at the resort. Mm -hmm. But... If you do it in a funny, compelling way that brings sarcasm and humor and connects to your audience, they don't see it as an interruption. They welcome it to their feed and it's fun for them. So the, the rule of like rehuck is like make it like a movie trailer. Make it like a good first date. It's not about you. It's about your audience. Get to know them. Ask a really good question and have an open loop. Have it compelling enough where it's like it's charged with power words. It's charged with contrast. Like if I said to you dripping with contrast, you can probably picture that. But if I said, hey, make sure that like these things, you know, like one is kind of like A, one is like Z, you don't see that, right? Like a very, very big difference. You should also write like you talk, like I said before. If you wouldn't say it, don't write it. And it needs to bring in your voice. It needs to bring in your euphemisms, your short forms, your language, your lingo. Bring in asterisks, bring in sounds, bring in things that like a movie script would be in there. Put those in pauses. Make me feel something when I read it. 
all of those techniques, and there's a ton more that we talk about, but like those are the difference between you reaching and connecting with your audience versus someone just scrolling past you and you never get seen.